All right, in this video for Grade 9 Advanced Science, we're looking at the Elements and Compounds Unit and the topic of the Law of Constant Proportions, which is really a glimpse at what Grade 11 chemistry, a Grade 11 chemistry topic, rather. So the first question says, Silver metal reacts with oxygen gas, and it forms silver oxide. The experiment finds that 463.5 grams of silver oxide forms when 32 grams of oxygen reacts with silver metal. So write a balanced chemical equation for the synthesis of silver oxide. So silver was reacting with oxygen. So silver is just the element silver, so we just write its chemical symbol from the periodic table, Ag. Oxygen is one of the elements which is diatomic, so it's actually not just O, it's written as O2. And it forms silver oxide, this reaction, and we're given its formula, Ag2O. So we have two elements combining to make a compound, silver oxide. Now in our first unit, we learned about the law of conservation of mass. So during a chemical reaction, mass is not supposed to change if you don't add or lose anything. So if we have one silver atom here to begin with, there's a problem if we end up having two silver atoms over here in the silver oxide. You can't suddenly gain ox silver atoms. Also, there were two oxygen atoms to begin with in the O2, but somehow there's only one oxygen atom left in the product, the silver oxide. So somehow we've lost an oxygen atom as well. Both of those things would violate the law of conservation of mass. So we need to balance the equation. Now you might think, well, can we just put a 2 over here, a little subscript 2 beside the O, and that would fix the oxygens, it would give me 2, and maybe erase this 2, and then we'd be good. But you're, if you change the subscripts in a chemical formula, you're changing the actual um, formula for that substance. That's not allowed. Just to give you a simple example, most people know that water is the chemical formula H2O. But if you were to change it to, say, H2O2, then you no longer have water. What you have now is called hydrogen peroxide. So changing the subscripts, is what those smaller numbers are called, um, are not allowed when you're balancing an equation. But what you can do is you can put numbers in front. You can say instead of one atom of silver, we could put a two and say we have two atoms of silver, or three, or four. Instead of one molecule of oxygen, remember that a molecule is where you have two or more atoms bonded together like this. If instead of one molecule of oxygen, we could have two molecules of oxygen, or three. Now, silver oxide, if this was a chemistry class, I wouldn't use the word molecule, but for, for now, grade 9, we'll just say it for instead of one molecule of silver oxide, we could have two, or three, or four. Okay? All right, so let's try to fix the the law of conservation of mass here by balancing. So if I have two oxygens here and there's only one oxygen here, I could put a two in front of silver oxide and claim now I'm making two molecules of silver oxide. Since each one has a single oxygen, two of them would now have two oxygens. But each molecule has two silvers, and now that I have a two up front, it means we have four silver atoms over here. So I need to fix that by putting a 4 in front of silver on the left. And there's my balanced chemical equation. Now, we were told up in the question that 463.5 grams, I'm just going to write that underneath, of silver, <coughs> excuse me, of silver oxide, 463.5 grams of this, was formed when 32 grams of oxygen reacted. Okay, that's not part of the balanced equation, but I'm looking at the next question. The question was, what mass of silver would have reacted with 32 grams of oxygen? Well, because of the law of conservation of mass, the total mass before the reaction has to equal the total mass after the reaction. So we're wondering how many grams of silver, I'll just call that X for now, would react with the 32 grams of oxygen to give me 463.5 grams of silver oxide. I think you can see what we're going to do, but if you want to set it up as a little math equation, the X, the grams of silver, plus the 32, the grams of oxygen, 
that's my total mass before the reaction. It has to equal the total mass after the reaction, which was 463.5 grams. So to find the silver, we're just going to take 463.5 minus 32. So 463.5 minus, oops, minus 32 gives me 431.5, the grams of silver metal that must have reacted. Remember, when you're adding or subtracting with measured quantities, you round off your answer based on the number of decimal places in the questions that were being added or subtracted. Since this number has one decimal place, 0.5, this has one decimal place, 0 0.0. We keep one decimal place, 0.5, in that answer. All right, so now we have essentially a complete recipe. We can go back up here and say 431.5 grams of silver react with 32 grams of oxygen to make 463.5 grams of silver oxide. And those masses give me mass ratios, just like in the electrolysis of water experiment. The numbers are not as nice as the electrolysis of water, but nonetheless, those are mass ratios, and we can use them to answer questions. For example, in part C, if five grams of silver reacted completely with oxygen, how many grams of silver oxide would form? So I'm just going to set up the unit multiplier to answer that. 5.00 grams of the silver reacts completely to make silver oxide. How many grams of silver oxide would form? So I'm going to convert my grams of silver to grams of silver oxide. And the numbers for that unit multiplier come from the recipe up above. 431.5 grams of silver will make 463.5 grams of silver oxide. So on my calculator, 5 times 463.5 divided by 431.5 equals 5.37. And I'm going to keep three significant digits in the answer, 5.37 grams of silver oxide will form. Part D, what mass of oxygen would react with 25 grams of silver? So just like above, we'll set up a unit multiplier. 25.0 grams of silver, and we're wondering how many grams of oxygen would react with this. So I'll convert my grams of silver to grams of oxygen and using the recipe from above, 431.5 grams of silver react with 32 grams of oxygen. So 32 grams of oxygen and 431.5 grams of silver. We're going, to, we're going to keep three significant digits in the answer. So we have 25 times 32 divided by 431.5 we're going to keep three digits, 1.85 grams of oxygen would react. And then finally, if you want to make three kilograms, 3.00 kilograms of silver oxide, what mass of silver would you need? And express that in kilograms. All right, so we want to make 3.00 kilograms, 3.00 kilograms of silver oxide, Ag2O. How many grams of silver would we need? There's a fast way to do this and there's a slightly longer way to do it. The slightly longer way will, will mean what we can convert the kilograms to grams of silver oxide, then the grams of silver oxide we can convert that to grams of um, silver metal, and then the grams of silver metal we can switch back to kilograms. So three unit multipliers. Alternatively, looking back at our mass ratios, we realize these are all in grams. If we were to switch them simply to kilograms, then we'd have the same ratio because there's a thousand grams in a kilogram. So we could really think of this as 431.5 kilograms of silver. 
react with 32 kilograms of oxygen to make 463.5 kilograms of silver oxide. If we thought of those as kilograms, then down here we would use one unit mul multiplier to solve this. Okay? I'll do it the long way, but you'll see when I set it up that the faster way also works. So the longer way would be to switch the gram kilograms to grams of silver oxide so that we can use the numbers up above and convert the grams of silver oxide to grams of silver and then switch the grams of silver back to kilograms of silver. And now putting your numbers in, the 1,000 grams and 1 kilogram in the first multiplier, but look at the third multiplier, 1 kilogram and 1,000 grams. Notice 1,000 on top and 1,000 on the bottom. Those are just going to cancel each other out. So really, we just needed that ratio in the middle, which is what I meant when I said there was a faster way to do this. So the ratio from up above told me 431.5 grams of silver will make 463.5 grams of silver oxide. Equals, and on my calculator, I'm going to just ignore those 1,000s because they cancel each other out. So 3 times 431.5 divided by 463.5 gives me 2.79, with three significant digits, 2.79 kilograms of silver will be needed to make the three kilograms of silver oxide. All right, so using unit multipliers to solve relatively simple um, law of constant proportions equations. It's the law of constant proportions because you remember that what that law says is that when you have a compound like silver oxide, there is a constant proportion, a constant ratio of elements that make up that compound. So when we say 431.5 grams react with 32 grams to make this, that is both an application of the law of conservation of mass, because this mass plus this mass equals this mass, but it's also the law of constant proportions, because we're saying every time you have 463.5 grams of silver oxide, you'll have 431.5 grams of silver, a constant proportion, a constant ratio, okay? Or that these two react in a constant ratio like this, and therefore we use those ratios in unit multipliers to solve problems. Okay, let's do one more question. We won't finish this one, but we'll we'll work through parts of it. So you have 46 grams of sodium reacting with 70.9 grams of chlorine gas, and chlorine is like oxygen, it's Cl2, and it makes um, sodium chloride, okay? Write a balanced equation for that. Well, sodium, Na, reacts with chlorine, Cl2, and it creates sodium chloride. And we saw sodium chloride earlier on our solubility charts, NaCl is its chemical formula. To balance this, we have a problem with chlorines. There's two atoms here, and there's only one atom here. So I can put a 2 as a coefficient in front of NaCl, and that fixes the chlorines. But that 2 gives me two sodiums, so I'll fix that by putting a 2 in front of the Na there. So now we have a balanced equation. Looking up above, we can insert some numbers beneath the balanced equation. There were 46 grams of sodium reacting with 70.9 grams, 70.9 grams of chlorine. What mass of sodium chloride would form in the reaction? Now it said that, that these two masses react completely. Both of them get used up. Therefore, because of the law of conservation of mass, we can say 46.0 grams of the sodium plus the 70.9 grams of the chlorine would have to equal the mass of that sodium chloride being produced. So 46 plus 70.9 gives me 116.9 grams of sodium chloride. 
Okay, so I'll put that number up here as well, 116.9 grams. So again, we have a little recipe for this balanced equation in terms of masses. There's a constant proportion by mass. So part C, if you want to make one kilogram of sodium chloride, how many grams of sodium metal, what mass of sodium metal would you need? Now it doesn't say grams, but we can express it in grams or kilograms, it doesn't matter. So we have 1.00 kilograms of sodium chloride that we want to make. How many grams of sodium would we need to do that? So the first thing I'll do is convert my kilograms back to grams of sodium chloride. And now using the numbers from up above, we can convert the grams of sodium chloride to grams of sodium. So grams of sodium chloride to grams of sodium using the constant proportion from the balanced equation. So there's 1,000 grams for every kilogram, and there were 46 grams of sodium for every 116.9 grams of sodium chloride. So we have on our calculator, we're going to take 1 times 1,000, or just 1,000, and we're going to times that by 46, and divide by 116.9, we get, with three, with three significant digits, 393 grams of sodium are needed. Okay? What mass of chlorine gas will react with 75 grams of sodium metal? So, 75.0 grams of sodium, and we're wondering how many grams of the chlorine would react with this. So we'll convert our grams of sodium to grams of chlorine using the balanced equation up above. We have 70.9 grams of chlorine for every 46.0 grams of sodium. So on our calculator, let's see, 75 times 70.9 divided by 46, keeping three digits, we get 116, 116 grams of chlorine gas would react. And finally, what is the percent by mass of sodium in sodium chloride? This is very similar to when we calculated percent zinc in zinc chloride in our experiment from the lab. So looking up at my recipe, in 116.9 grams of sodium chloride, there was 46 grams of sodium that reacted and went into that compound. So of the 116.9 grams of sodium chloride, 46 grams is sodium. So therefore, we can calculate the percent sodium by taking the mass of sodium, 46.0 grams of sodium, and dividing by the total mass, 116.9 grams of sodium chloride, and times it by 100 to get percent. So 46 out of 116.9 times 100, it's 39.3 percent. 39.3 percent sodium. Okay. Now notice, if I if I knew that percent sodium up front. I could have written a different mass ratio. It would actually be the same ratio, but with different numbers. We could say 39.3 grams of sodium would react with a certain number of grams of chlorine. And because this was percent, we could say that would make 100 grams of sodium chloride. And to get the grams of chlorine, we would just subtract 100 minus 39.3, and we get 60.7 grams of chlorine. So notice when you know percentages, you can create a mass ratio based on the percentages. Percent means for every 100 grams of that sodium chloride. In any case, I hope that helps with some law of constant proportions 
um, for grade 9 advanced science for the test or for the exam review.